I'm like, Charlie, you start the motorbike. <laughs> As he plays more games and, and develops, we're going, to have a, we're going to have a really special player on our hands. Did you say Ronaldo's one of the best players in the world and now you're saying Kelvin Sale's better than him? So you're rounding yourself at a job you've not even been linked to. <laughs> That's the end of another international break in the club football returns. We have got the two perfect guests to talk everything Scotland and the SPFL returning this week, haven't we, Gordon? I was going to count them before we came on. Bad preparation, but we must be knocking in the door of 100 caps between these two. So the perfect two to look back on the international games and look forward uh, to the domestic stuff returning. James McFadden and Charlie Mulgrew, fresh from your big commentary outing the Scotland game, <laughs> you're the perfect man to give us the, the inside track. How was it? The game, hi, the game is... Game was good, hi. It was um like to have a bit more have a bit more possession, but we did create a lot of chances, probably the best chances, two or three good chances, good opportunities. Um Portugal a class outfit, we had world class players, but uh nah, we defended the box really well. I thought Suter and particularly Suter Hanley was good as well, but Suter was brilliant. What line are you most proud of? The Ronaldo kicks no, down a motorbike or screwing Anthony <clears throat> Ralston into the top. I like the screwing into the deck one, aye, because like I've, I've been there before, it's <laughs> You're horrible. Proud of that one. Aye. We still, we still screwed into that deck half the rest of the game. Fives, it? You're, you're screwed into the. I've been in discredit, especially when McGeady's playing. He, he's, that's his world class at that. I actually, I, I preferred the motorbike. I've never heard it's that. Like before. That was on Coil used to say that. Any time you took a bad touch, so if you, so that's when you used to say trap it, but you can't. So you go to trap it and you lift your leg up. So on Coil, whenever you've done it in, in training or. Incredible. Like, Charlie, you start the motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> you so just start back in the commentary. Ah, you need, you need <laughs> yeah, to be quick. It was you that was starting the motorbike. See, the it? thing is, Ronaldo's clearly been <clears throat> everywhere, done it all, had everything said until that. I, I bet he's never had that accusation thrown at him. Do you think he's and I don't think he's ever started the motorbike like that in an international game, has he? I think he's heard that half time. That's what was wrong with Was it you that said, someone asked before we came on here, did, does Charlie plan these things? I, thought, I, I, don't, I don't think so. How so could he plan are, that? How do you know Ronaldo's going to do that? I suppose these are things that have been aimed at you and then you just just you know, pass them on you steal them the best on a serious note James good. for you I know you're still passionate <laughs> fan and yep. pundit and all the rest of it how would you sum up that that break because uh, you were out in Zagreb as well weren't you for the, I was in Zagreb yeah. for the Croatia game uh, it's hard to say positive when you're not winning games but I think the performances have been very good um, look, you, you have to accept that you're playing against Portugal we saw it when, when we played them in Lisbon that you can have your moments where you get opportunities and if you take them, great, but you're going to have to defend for large parts because they're so good all over the pitch and it's no like you're, you're coming up against a, a system that you need to try and counter the system. You're coming up against a group of players that are quite fluid um, and, and they will move into areas to find the ball and I felt that we defended really well. Um, you know, Charlie's already mentioned Suter and Hanley. I thought Anthony Ralston over the, the two games has looked far more comfortable and confident playing um, and as a right back. <clears throat> Andy Robertson's performances, I think, have been excellent as well. Um, did you go unnoticed now a little bit? Um, I was like used to it or expected no, from I, him? I, probably, but I think that um, you need, obviously, your players to, to turn up. I just think that you're getting to see him playing going forward at the right times, maybe not as much in the, the Portugal game, certainly the Croatia game. Um, and I just think that, you know, with a lot of good performers, Kenny McLean as well in midfield, I thought came in done well. Billy Gilmer's always, you know, at that level. Um, and <clears throat> particularly Croatia game, you're watching a game where you're maybe expecting to see a, a big gulf in class between, you know, Croatia and Scotland because of their, their history, because of the players they have. I don't think there was. I, th I thought that we looked, you know, equal if not better at times. Um, but the Portugal game was about being solid and actually seeing it, a result. Yeah, it, we're not going to celebrate a nil now and say this is amazing, but we've lost late goals. We've lost goals where you think, if we could only defended that a bit better. Even the Portugal away game. <clears throat> yeah. Was, so, yeah, the an Croatia that, game, you, you see that coming. They're trying to look for the little diagonals yeah. over the full-backs. They're trying to exploit us. Um, and if, eventually they get their breakthrough. But in the Portugal game, they never... Um, and it's nice to see players coming off a bit frustrated at not getting a, a goal or who, a result. Who in particular? Name names, come yeah, on. I think we'll we'll see I, I don't know if he's left his motorbike in the car park, maybe, and he was just <laughs> trying to get back. I just <laughs> love if somebody sent him that clip and tried to explain he must the reference. <clears throat> he must have heard it, surely. He was, think um, so? Yeah, I He wasn't so. happy, was he? I reckon Ronaldo strikes me as the kind of guy who would listen to commentary and I feedback about himself. His own name uh, on yeah, sure. X. I, I reckon so. I don't, um, yeah. Disney you don't think he does? Too many. How too many, many mentions. How many of them? Far oh. too many. Do you think, and I want to hear this in the comments as well from people, <clears throat> do you still think he's considered one of the best in the world? He's playing in the Saudi right League now? now? Right now, no. yeah. No? 
No. Who would you? How many? Players I think be because to... when you when you go to you know a league like the Saudi league, and I know there's still you know brilliant players. I think that goes, um, and fairly or unfairly, you're judging them on what he used to be able to do, and people look and say, well, he's not the same player. I mean, you're not going to be at, at 39, but he's still. I think he's still, you know, a, a very good player, but I don't think you would put him in as one of the best strikers in the world at the minute. I understand what you're, what you're saying, and I think I, ju- I just think that if, if a chance for, falls to him, he'll still score the other night. It's difficult for him. He's, he still scored uh, on the weekend, didn't he? Like in the exactly. Game. And I think against Scotland, I think there was like nine people in the box at some time, sometimes mm-hmm. ten. Mm-hmm. One player, like, every player within 30 yards. So it's, it was difficult. And we def- as I say, we defended the ball really well. Defended the... The, the box really well so no I still say he's one of one of the best strikers in the world how important say. do you think the result was because obviously you, <clears throat> there's two like ways of looking at it it's still one win in 16 I think clearly that that's not good and that's <clears throat> a fact but everybody knows the the level of opposition now the fact that the performances since the Euros actually have been pretty good been pretty encouraging so where are we you know is the team and the manager still right to be criticised a think, lot or I, I think when you look at the games we've played in we've played at a Euros so we didn't get to there for years. We got to <clears throat> two major competitions. So there's huge credit for that to the manager. Germany think, in the first game as well. Exactly. Away. I think then you're, you're in the top uh, Nations League groups. So you're going to be up against the best. So you, you kind of need to be realistic in that sort of way. Um, the results happen. But performances have been good. Even go back to the Holland game, you look how well... <clears throat> We actually played in that game and, and, and get beat comfortably. So there is a lot of positive signs there. The Poland home game was unlucky as well, wasn't it? The yeah. Penalty and... um, I think there is positives within that. Is there a bit of a flip? Are we seeing something more adventurous, more attacking? If you look at, well, Ben Doak as an example, everyone's yeah. kind of hoping that he's going to be some sort of attacking spark. Well, on, on, on that one as well, I think that when we pressed Portugal in their third, so when they tried to play and we pressed them up high, they don't want to kick it long and I think that that's when we look very, we look comfortable we look def- as if because we've got the energy McTominay's used to pressing high Robertson's used to pressing high two are arguably two of our best players Gilmore's a possession based player that, that his team's press high that he's played for so I think when we press teams up high it makes them kick it long and it suits us because then we can win the second balls and, and turn that into a bit of a fight and then get have the ball inside their half instead of allowing them to have it but uh, any time we've done it Switzerland first half against them we pressed them high up McGinn and McTominay were right after teams they don't like it and I like to see us doing that I think when we do that we're a much better team people are looking for that sign that it's new and it's shiny and it's heading in a, just a different direction does Ben Doak sort of sum that up you know because he's he wasn't at the Euros due to injury and he's young you know is he almost the people's <coughs> sign of, of what's maybe to come I think so I think the the change to back four certainly is a, is a big sign the way that um, we can have that opportunity. It's easier to probably press within that shape, and it's it's easier to you know squeeze the game. Um, but Ben Doak, I've seen a few people saying, "Oh, don't get carried away." You know, I think people get carried away with his performance. I, d- I don't think we did get carried away. I think you look at the the Croatia one because I was there. <clears throat> a young player, eighteen, who's barely played any any football. He had a bad injury as well at Liverpool when he was he actually getting appearances and then he got injured at quite a crucial time. But he's not yeah. like he's not had a chance to develop for being this, you know, wonder kid to international player. But when you watch him playing, he plays with maturity. He takes he's got a good first touch. Normally you see a young player or any player with, with real speed, and that's their main attributes, real speed. Maybe the technical sides lacking, maybe the tactical sides. Really. Yeah, well, Start sometimes. <laughs> but <Start> maybe <laughs> we're not quite old enough for a moment. Maybe the tactical sides needs to develop, which at 18 it probably should anyway. But I think that when it was coming into him, he was coming inside, he was taking a good first touch. You could see he knew exactly what he was doing. He was up against Fardell in that game. He was taking him down the line, he was getting crosses in, he was coming inside, and he's crossed for the, the Ryan Christie goal. It's not a great cross. But it's the fact they actually stepped onto the right, brought it in, crossed it with the left. And you think, right, so he's got the variation. The final pass, the final delivery will get better. But I think we should get excited about a young player that's come in and, and it's not just a case of, right, he's quick, hit it in behind, he'll catch it. Don't know what he's going to do when he gets there, but it's exciting. Actually, his, his technical ability is, is probably what, what I noticed more than anything. So every other country celebrates young players. It's almost like we're not allowed to celebrate anything. Of course, I, I understand the pressure, but listening to me speak, 
he seems like he's ready to deal with it. He's went for Celtic to Liverpool and that in itself takes your pressure. He's going out and going to a championship club to get experience. I think he's very level-headed. So, I let's celebrate him. We've got a player that could be a really special player in the future, but he, he looks like he's ready to play now. How did you, what age did you make your <clears throat> Scotland debut? 19. How did you enjoy the the pressure sort of in-game? We're talking, you know, guys that carry the ball. You, you've been there in terms of <clears throat> you pick up that ball and people just expect you. Your teammates, people in the stadium, the country, what, did you like that? I, I loved it. I loved, because it was just how I played. Um, I didn't think... I, I was a, it was a wee bit different because it's a lot more structured now and you've got your partners to play and players make better decisions in terms of they'll not take the risk at times whereas I just I just wanted to play I just wanted especially when you step up a level you my uh, thought process was can I take these players on can I beat them um, so I enjoyed it um, at the start it was you know a wee bit different because you're just trying to impress to get in the team and, and make sure you're in the next squad but when I became established even at a young age it was like right just you know take people on get crosses in the box I was playing wide and, and trying you know score goals create chances if you don't if you if it doesn't work the first time go again if it doesn't work the second time go again Do you think it is again, easier in a way again. being a younger player because you have that fearlessness you can oh, just go definitely. out and play rather definitely. than being a little bit older when you make your debut and... Yeah, I would say so I think that there's definitely, we'd all love to be young players again where you didn't worry about, you know, what somebody was shouting at you. Or, you I, know, didn't yeah, I didn't <laughs> worry. I didn't worry. I didn't worry at all. I always worry. <laughs> big warrior. I didn't no, like I, it, but I didn't worry about it. Uh, I think you've told me this before. <clears throat> I don't get that. See that, having fe a fearless young player. <laughs> I've, actually <laughs> said it, I've actually said it myself, but I think, I was the fearless. <laughs> Ever? No, yeah. I mean, right, you still yeah. have. I think some boys are though. Some boys are just like <laughs> you. See, you probably were. I don't know, but how old were you when you made your Sam will like it. Tell Sam about the time the ball went under your foot in a European game. Oh, you might Sam, not have heard what's it. this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm taking me back. I'm <laughs> having a horrible feeling in my stomach. So <laughs> I signed back for Celtic, right? Yeah. And, and um, I'm I'm playing beat for Braga. I think away leg. We definitely did get beat. We're back to Celtic Park. I'm starting left back again. I had a nightmare in the first leg. Having an absolute nightmare first half. Ball's going to play, right? Honest to God, the ball's going to play for a throw into us. And I'm like oh, so low, low, low on a stakes belly, like absolute nightmare <clears> fan <throat> doing everything. Ball goes to go to play for us for a throw in. You're like, this talk about no thinking straight mm -hmm. and full of fear. Yeah. I go, to go, I go, I'm going to keep that in for us. Try, I go to keep it in a top poke for a throw in. <laughs> the whole place that just starts to like, oh, I oh, just man. felt that side. It's the worst thing to do. time like. stood in the shower just thinking, oh, man, there's man. my life gone here. Back to a more positive. <laughs> I think, I think you... <laughs> oh, Charlie, he's not going to come back. It's probably like right, you're looking back at it saying you were fearless. Of course, you're yeah, still yeah, yeah. worried about making mistakes. And like, I always remember when I, when I started, particularly being a wide man, you need to try and grow into the game as much as you can. As basic as control the ball mm -hmm. like make sure your first mm -hmm. touch is decent where you're not letting it roll under your foot or you're mm -hmm. not making a mistake build yourself into the game and then when you get confident and you know you can you that can was always the same when it years ago even like coming through the reserves the first team get, make sure you get a first uh, pass away first pass, yeah. see when you never you go wow no <laughs> <laughs> that's not <laughs> especially when you're 60 yeah. see though I think you've said you've told me before you, you said that when you, you picked up the ball at hand and you you, you sort of knew that like you sensed an expectation to go and you know talk aye, about it, aye, there was times like you couldn't believe this there was times where I could definitely hear the the seats rattling off the back so when you I, knew when people, I was during the game aye, you could hear to get the, so you knew people were standing up aye. because they were excited about because it, because they knew I was going to try and beat somebody I could that's what, that. I just get shivers yeah, that's, that's good isn't it? that's what that's Scotland nice. haven't had I suppose in the last few years but now we've got a Ben Doak who yep. can come in and play like that I just I there's not know. been too many so players that, that can... better check with Ben Doak to see if he's happy with that <laughs> so you <laughs> could hear the seats you could hear up. the seats especially I used to hear people leaving when I was <laughs> <laughs> groaning and leaving no you could you could you could hear the I could hear the seats that's great awareness oh, that's man. that shatters all these football it's because it, ah, you're just concentrating yeah, on your job it's because there's moments in games where there's a silence we've we all go to games mm -hmm. there's a, a silence because it's maybe a collective you know anticipation of what's going to happen and at that point it, I could hear the I could hear the seats you know banging off the back of people 
So you thrived on that, and ultimately, then is that is that the challenge then for Ben Doak and drawn <clears throat> comparisons? But just to, to can he be the can can he embrace that? You know, because ah, every time he gets the ball, people are going to going to expect things, aren't they? That would absolutely. I think that's the type of player he is. Is he wants to he'll, he'll do the shift defensively because you have to, um, but he wants to take people on. I think you could see the confidence that he has, particularly in the the Croatia game. Where he's getting one v one against Bardell, who's you know playing for Man City, second most expensive defender ever. No fear, no no thinking. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to play it safe here. I, I've got a chance to go one v one, but I'll turn back and somebody else can do that. He's he's happy to take that on, and I think that um, as he gets better, as he as he plays more games and, and develops, we're going to have a we're going to have a really special player on our hands. But I know people say look. Calm down. It's only it's only been a couple of games, but I, I would rather get excited about what what could be rather than saying, oh, you know, he's got a lot to learn. He's a young boy. Let's embrace it. Apart from Faddy, who's the best dribbler <coughs> you played with? Dribbler, McGeady. He announced his retirement. Just uh, after we that, started okay. recording. It's uh, a blow for the sixes, isn't it? Because if you're not oh, on his team, no. <laughs> he started playing he in your old trucks, gave six of sides, has he? Oh, I is he running rings around everyone? Uh, ah, he's, he's no hard child. to defend against. <laughs> he's needing to get used to Charlie being able to touch Control each the side of the six, <laughs> the six side pitch with both, 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 both feet at the same time. <laughs> that is true. I mean, I a long Charlie's way. a big giraffe. A big giraffe, man. Just <laughs> cut, he, he'll give the ball away and then win it back at the... At the Inspector zone. Gadget legs. <laughs> <laughs> Could shoot and win it back at the same time. <laughs> Do you know what you should do? You you teach me these YouTube things. You should tell people to comment and say who the best dribbler I've seen is. Is that a good idea for me? Is there many in the comments? Am I getting used to it? Well? Can. Yeah, you could do it as well. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> getting used to it now. You've been in enough times. Um, but yeah, we want the best dri- we want the best dribbler and also we want is Ronaldo still top good. few players in the world. I'm That's happy. what we want in the comments this week. So. I'm happy with that. Time for the rondo. Time Let's put the these two under pressure with a bit of Ooh. quick fire. I'd bang the table, which is the number one rule. We have not to do. Do you want? Do you want to choose? Who would you like to? Um, Charlie. I'll do you. All right, go on then. You, okay, let's do it. So um, after the international break, you've seen a lot of him. But who would you choose, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. <clears throat> Straight off the bat. Not yeah, even. Messi. I, I just... not close. Um, it's close because both the records are that mm. good. But for me, I would much rather. Uh, not play against Messi. Fair it's enough. Quite... Uh, Favourite away ground to play in? Um, New Camp. Oh, to oh. be fair, you can't, it's hard to you can't not say New Camp. Uh, current SPFL player you'd love to play with? Um, I'd like to play with. Uh, I can see Keogh go on the shoulder for his <coughs> diagonals. Yeah, the diagonals. Callum McGregor. Yeah, fair enough. And obviously Ronaldo. <laughs> him? No, when he was number six, when he was a winger. I'd, like I'd, like I'd, like an... I'd like to feed that in the infinite. He wants back, to see right? him as okay, a... Okay. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Ronaldo's has a, had a busy week. What's your favourite flume? <laughs> you must have been on a few flumes around. <laughs> the flume? The English people uh... use the word flume. This has been annoying me this I, week. I get annoyed because my missus said flume recently, but in Scotland you don't say flume, you say flume. So do, but so English people do use the word flumes. I've, I've heard of yeah, but right. I, I just what is like, he actually on the shoot. shoots at Cameron House? Yeah. Aye. Someone sneaked through the window. Did with you not see it? No. Somebody filming him going down the slide. Yeah, the budgie <laughs> smuggles on. But are we serious? What's the best Seriously? flume you've been on? That's yeah, time time the best one I've been on. No, it's the one in Tenerife. Oh, like that Siam Park. Park. Ah, I wonder like that. Yeah, you know, good. just the flames of Tenerife. No, it's a well, it's no, it's the it's a Siam Park. I don't know the individual name. I flew to be the one. Kamikaze, you know. Some lad, like, I just went in the mall. This show has plunged <clears> new depths, <throat> right? If I just take the cues, but for flames, <laughs> how badly? They're all shady as well. You're freezing, aren't you? Not if it's worth it. Not if you've ten seconds. Not if Cameron House gets shut off for you. I imagine it would have. Anyway, imagine him queuing for that. Imagine the queue outside. Like you can't go in when Aldo's in. He's got to be half an hour. He wants ten goes at it. He's just getting up and front, back, James is done. Best goal you've scored for Scotland? Is it Paris or is it something else? Uh, oh, bet not. Keeper should save that one in Paris. Ah, should should. Let's go. Probably. Then. Pick one. <sighs> Macedonia. Halfway line. Halfway line. Keeper. Locking up Meg. 300 things going through my mind as a face of keeper. Do I slot it? Do I chip him? Do I go through his legs? Seats, yeah, I would run him. seats banging in the yep. background. Yeah. You yep. can hear it. Ah, the goal. Anticipation. 
I've watched a few times. Nice. Uh, if you could bring one back, are you bringing back the rat tail or the mohawk? Oh, the mohawk. I could do a rat tail right now. <laughs> <laughs> mohawk all day long. It'd mean I'd have red, some hair in the middle. Would you mix up? Uh, no, if I had to bring one back, then I'd, I'd just go with the red mohawk. I'd rather have a red mohawk than what I've got right now. I just get pictures of you in the paper with that red mohawk. Maybe you missed a flight to Japan or something. I was a wee boy like that. What's he done? A red mohawk. Oh, that should have been a question. Uh, too late. Something about a flight in there. Too late. Who's the angrier Ferguson, Duncan or Barry? Barry. So he is angrier. But Aye. Duncan's scary, Duncan looks scary. I wouldn't like to see angry Duncan Ferguson that often, but I used to get to see angry Barry Ferguson every day. So Barry's angry. Because you were right there with the you're right there with the Jimmy Bullard Aye. one, aren't you? Aye. I was going to oh, say you're the one yeah. that separates them, but you wouldn't get. No, them, I was you? I was beside him, but uh, Bullard comes round to me because he speaks to Big Dunk, <laughs> and he's just because he's like a character, Jimmy Bullard. The way he, the way you see what he's like off. What did they say camera. you then? So he's. <clears throat> he's went round and tried to crack a joke at Big Dunk but as he's on his way I'm thinking don't mate he's just staring into <laughs> oblivion so he comes up to me and goes is he alright? I says don't know mate but I ain't asking him <laughs> and he's like he's, his face he's shouting him, I'll see you in the tunnel after the game and all that try yeah. to get him to laugh stay out the way <laughs> no thanks uh, right Chris Boyd or Chris Sutton for what? Just pick your favourite Chris <sighs> Oh yes, great Chris. <laughs> Sitting between Horrible. Them, right? Sitting right in between them, just wondering what's going on. <sighs> he's thinking, he's calculating who's most likely to see this. Yeah. Who's most oh, no, who's, exactly. I know who's going to see he's it. He's across everything that And I, I've got an easy out, but I need to go Boyd. Well, yep. um, if we're talking domestic <clears throat> football then and that transition back, do we, does the break come at a good time, a bad time? You hear that stuff? That, who, who, who would fall into each category, if you like? <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's tough because for teams that have maybe a couple of injuries or you know players carrying knocks, it's a good time because you get them to, to rest. and Good time for Hearts, <clears> isn't <throat> it? Get yeah, a manager in manager, yeah. Get, get, get a fresh start, maybe. I'll take a look at the fixtures, yeah. in fact, while we're, while we're here. In fact, let's just, let's, the obvious place to start is at the top. Um, Celtic against Aberdeen, you, you couldn't really ask for more to get to the, the 19th of October and have the top two having won every game playing against each other. We do this every week, don't we? So it's the Charlie Mulgrew derby. Charlie Mulgrew derby. derby. And, and it's yeah. no Celtic v Rangers. It's Celtic yeah, v another exactly. team. Yeah, exactly. It's brilliant to see Rangers v another team. Um, so. Do you think they will sustain that for <clears throat> the rest of the season and be right up there? I don't think they'll win every game between now and the rest <laughs> of the season. I can <laughs> tell you that. Not quite win every game, but, you know, be uh, there I don't know. I'd love to see it. But I, I really would. I think it's, it's great to have, you know, a team that would maybe no used to seeing I know a lot of the older fans are, are used to seeing Aberdeen you know challenging mm -hmm. for titles but that's been a long time um, so I think it's great that they've started the season so well I think it's great that we're talking about a game where uh, I mean it's no make or break for Aberdeen far from it but so what a statement it would be because oh, yeah. everyone's saying well, well okay well you've won <clears throat> all your games but you know you're going to play Celtic and that'll that'll change. Uh, they won't they won't think that I'm sure. No, they won't. And I, I, look, if if Aberdeen win, it doesn't mean they're going to win the league. Yeah. And if they lose, it doesn't mean they can't maintain their their form. Um, but I, I just think it's great to begin into this game. Everybody's moaning about it not being on telly, and it's a game that there probably wouldn't be as as big an appetite for um, to to be shown, and everybody is interested in it because they want to see if Aberdeen can maintain their levels and. Uh, I, I think a lot of people will be. I, I, I still think Celtic win the game, but I think Aberdeen can win the game, and that's that's probably all the Aberdeen need getting into the game that they can win it. They've not been playing amazing, but they're winning games and they're in a, a good place at the minute. They've got players performing at good levels, and um, so they can be confident getting into the game that they can cause an upset because it still would be an upset. Well, that's <clears> it. That takes a lot to change that. Charlie, the, you know, the, the odds are going to tell you that Celtic will be overwhelming favourites. Well, Celtic, because they are so used to being in the position they're in, mm. and they just, do they look at this just like any other opponent or, or will there be a realisation? I mean, you, you'll have played in a Celtic mm. team, I guess, where Aberdeen did, yeah. where, where your nearest rivals and, and Rangers weren't there. D did you view them that way or did it just feel like any other game? You definitely take a bit more, pay a bit more attention and think they're in good form, so they'll, they'll look into the games they've played and... And realise why that is and what kind of way Aberdeen are playing. I think that, but I think it will suit Celtic to be honest with you. I think that a team that think they can come and get something at Celtic Park and maybe try to have a back possession, a step up a wee bit, 
I think Celtic will. Do you think they will play like that though? Uh, I think I don't think they'll change Aberdeen. But <coughs> I think compared it to when Falkirk went I, there, I think it'll be similar to that where they'll go and try and play their way in. Yeah, I just think something. that Celtic dictate what you do. I mean, you, you can you can have a lot of the ball against other teams, and you can you can dominate the games. Um, but when you're up against Celtic, you'd... I think it'd be I think you'll adapt slightly. Telling, I think it, he's he's done that before. I don't think he'll be. I wouldn't say naive, but I don't think he'll think right. We can just go there and and press them and be open. I think there'll still be you know a, a structure where maybe they'll have to do it for a wee bit deeper, but try and you know catch Celtic and, and, and take the ball off them in, in areas that they're they're planning to take them off them where they can hurt them. I don't think it'll be as, as open because I don't think you can. I think they've started brilliant and I know a lot of people have been critical to say, ah, they've not played anybody. They've not had a test yet. Well, they have. They have a test every time they, they, kick, they play a game and they've played, whether it's at the right time, St Mirren, Kilmarnock, two, two teams that everybody gave praise last season. Brilliant seasons. I know they played in Europe, Hearts. So you're playing, you know, they've played three yeah. of the, the, the top six for last season. And that actually was a good Hearts <clears throat> performance, wasn't it? It's it was. Not like, it's not like Hearts were terrible and that's the only reason Aberdeen won. So that, that did become a test. I know the league table doesn't Dundee as well. suggest that. So they've played, apart for Celtic Rangers, they've played, you know, the other teams for yeah. the top six. They beat High Flying Motherwell, who have been outstanding this season. So Into the League Cup semi <clears> as well. The, the, they're doing well, Aberdeen, and, and maybe, um, look, this is a massive step. This is the test for them though to see exactly where they are it was Aberdeen for you Charlie that was um, you know it came at a time in your career that a big kind it was of brilliant I, I love my time there um, the fans up there demand a lot for the team they're used to they're used to the 80s when they were they were winning a lot of stuff and they, and they demand a lot one one city one one club so um, it's an intense place place to play and it stood me in good stead for going and playing for Celtic leaving there so I'm thankful for my time there I enjoyed Who's it was the manager again when you were at Aberdeen? it was uh, Jimmy Calderwood First year, stories of him being. Well, both of them are quite well-known characters. Any, aye, any yeah, standout two, moments? Two sound guys. I. Um, oh, you're putting me in the spot here with Jimmy Calder. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be that tune the fat. Eh, no tune the fat sketch. Eh, only an excuse. But aye. it was eh, the fat at Denny's trousers and all that, wasn't there? <laughs> eh, no, nah, he was. He was a good guy, Jimmy. I liked. I liked Jimmy. Um, but no, nah, no, nah, it was a good, good club. Good, uh, good club to play for, and it's great to see him doing so well talk about sometimes just that, that crossover to an international football you know if you go away and have a good break can yeah. that spur you on and we'll get to other players but <clears throat> what a story Nicky Devlin is brilliant I mean Stenhouse Muir and Ayr and Walsall and Levy I think his birthday's round about today-ish I think he's about I'm not sure yeah you know he's, he's 31 um, <laughs> great you, story in any of your 15 mother spells was he a kid Aye. I he? don't know what, what spell it was but he was there <laughs> to keep up. I remember he was there I think no, I think it was my second spell Um Nicky was there, he was out on loan. Then but he come and train and just uh I know people say this all the time, right? A lovely guy. Yeah. Deserves deserves a recognition because his work rate, his determination, as you say, the teams that the teams that you've rounded off is certainly unconventional to to find your way to becoming an international player. And um, but I think that over the last, since he's come back up to Scotland and, and you know, with Livingston, he spells at Livingston. I think people have, you know, been aware that he's, he's a good player. Um, he's kicked on again this season at Aberdeen. And I just, it's just great to see him, you know, to, to go and get your international cap, especially the, the, the game as well. So it's not like a total gesture, no. right? Go on, uh, it's you're a good guy, go there's a cap, it. but it's not one of them. Against you know Ronaldo. And then he comes on and, and gets a block and there's not, nothing better. If you've been a sub and you come on and you don't touch the ball, you're like, mm. oh, great, I've, you know, I've got an appearance, but I never even, even done anything. Competitive fixture as well. It's not like so, it's a friendly. No, know, like it been. and a, a huge game where it, it was in the balance. We've lost so many late goals as well. So, no, I think that it's great for him, a great recognition of, of, of him, first of all, for the hard work that he's put in throughout his career. Um, but he won't be... You know, sitting saying, right, that's great. I've I've made my appearance, and it'll be it'll help him kick on. And as you say, coming off the back of a, a dream scenario for him to go and you know make your debut for your country. I was very lucky to do it when I was young, but I I could imagine the the kind of work that he's had to put in the, the journey that he's been on. How special that that would have meant for him and and all his family as well being there. It's it's a tremendous Did thing. You, Mr. Social Media, <clears throat> see the video of his wee boy. I seen it. Going yeah, to I see his so. first. Yeah. Somebody amazing. was cutting onions, I think, at that, that point. Was amazing. Do you see well, it? I see it? Yeah. So he's, he's 
partner or his wife, I think, has been filming. The son must have only been about two. two or so he's or got two. the strip on, yeah. dad in the back, and running about, traveling to Hamden, getting to Hamden, sitting watching him come on. Just, oh, and just all, watch it amazing. when you're on your own. I played against him when he was at Walsall when I was at Blackpool. Okay, yeah. And I remember we had somebody up against him who was really quick and he couldn't get past him. He kept matching him and I was thinking, <clears> he's rapid. And after the game, he's like, how are you doing? I was like, he's Scottish. <laughs> he's too quick to be Scottish. <laughs> um, so then, you hadn't heard, come across him? No, I'd never come across him. He must have been a big time. Yeah, I know. Aye, I was not. He's playing against Ronaldo. 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 I didn't know him and then obviously met him there and then followed his career and then was hopeful we could have signed him at Dundee United when he was at Livingston because his contract was coming in but we were never going to get him and then Goes to Aberdeen. I like him. Yeah. A really good player. We have a new manager in the do, Scottish yeah. Premiership. Give him the, the big warm up introduction. Yeah, another, Neil Critchley, another man who's been down in England as well. Did you guys ever come across no. Critchley in your career? No. What What were your thoughts on his well, appointment? He's nodding. He's, You're nodding. You did oh, come I across against, against these, everybody. I played against his uh, Blackpool team uh, when you were at Blackpool. When I was uh, at Fleetwood, on oh, the road Fleetwood from yeah, okay. Blackburn, I yeah. Before I came back up the road, he had two stints at Blackpool. I think the fans yeah, quite first one was good. Yeah. Yeah. First one to get promoted. Yeah. Um, I think any very, <clears throat> very defensive his team was, or if I remember rightly, they were very well set up and organised. Do you think that's because he's at Blackpool and he's maybe fighting against the tide there? Do you think he'll change Potentially, that? Because he came from Liverpool. Was that a deliberate came, seaside yeah, yeah. reference there? What the did Blackpool you say? And the tide. Oh, I didn't that. even that's know I was doing that, but they just come naturally, don't they? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's written down there. Yeah, yeah, it? <laughs> Under it, he's got Blackpool Rock and donkeys on the beach. So what, 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 buzzing to see, see what comes like. I definitely don't. But... Pitching that game, Charlie, <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, <laughs> see the donkeys. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of intrigue. Hearts are one of our biggest clubs, so when they appoint any manager, but this is a really interesting one because of the way it's came about. Yeah, yeah. There's been all this hype about Tony Bloom and analytics, and Neil Critchley's the the man. That's was he was he part of that analytics thing? That's, that's, that? that's came out that's that's the is it that's the, the the sort of reasoning behind the appointment so interesting you see i just remember his team being really organized some people um think that they're just letting a computer pick who the manager is i think the like football now whether you're a player a coach you use data whether it's you know you you'll date as a coach now you look at certain stats to to help you make a decision you won't be led by them but they're there so that you can look at the the info and it's up to you to decide i think that it's different and because it's different a lot of people are critical of it but if you look at and it's not that they're going to be brighton you know of scotland but brighton have had success with bringing coaches in that maybe other people wouldn't have maybe looked at certainly signing players that other other people weren't they looking at and getting there ahead of people it can't be luck. It, 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 they can't fluke every single one. Casado coming in for five million, sell, selling them for over a hundred. McAllister moving on the players that, that they've signed, Could the managers have brought in. For him as well. Exactly. Yeah. You know when Graham Potter get appointed from Swansea, having been in Sweden, working in the fourth mm -hmm. division all the way up. Obviously, you can see that progression, but they make this decision to bring him in. Does be another one that comes in? People like Billy Wood is and all about English football. It's know that they go right. He's he's come out top in the computer. Therefore, we go for him. It's the it's part of the process, and it's I think uh, definitely. So you, so you think even you you need to put your faith in that process, <laughs> even if you can look at. And let's be honest, it's because he's he's been on our doorstep. So you can look at his previous jobs. People know a lot about it or a relative amount about right. it. So even if there have been elements of that that you don't think have been successful, the analytics might show something underlying I, that it's it's there for all to see. Like it's successful. How they work it is successful. And as as you say, they're not going to just copy it. They've done it as well in Belgium with Union San was where they've went from the third division into the top fight, challenge yeah. for titles into Europe. It was in Europe as well, you see them. Where they're yeah. signed they've they signed a lot of players that were lower league players that maybe other people wouldn't mm -hmm. touch. They've put people in place. It's it's about getting the right people in place to use the data to their advantage. So the Hearts fans <clears> should be <throat> excited with what's I up. think it, whether you get carried away and get excited, but I wouldn't dismiss it straight away just because people keep saying supercomputer and, and they've let a computer decide. I think that you have to let it play out and, and actually look at it and say, well, it's a bit different. It may well work, it may not, but at least it's, you know, thinking a wee bit outside the box. Straight in though, St Mirren, Tyne Castle, so it's, you know, it's a home game, you know, so-called 
know, more than so-called it is its home mm-hmm. advantage. St Mirren, I, I think on paper, are still not, it's not an opponent you would handpick. You can make life very mm-hmm. difficult for you, but at the same time, they've not enjoyed great results either leading into the, the break. What do you make of that as a, an opening fixture for them? Yeah, it's a, it'll be an interesting fixture because St Mirren are um, well organised, as you said. Steve Robinson's got them well organised and well drilled and they, they know exactly who they are as a team. So Hearts are going to be favourites at home. You'd imagine the crowd would expect they may be on the front foot and going and creating chances. And for what I've seen for the manager, he's kind of more of a uh, defensive type of manager. But as, as Fadi says, maybe that's just that couple of games I saw. I, I'm, I'm not too too sure. Maybe I don't know. If, I don't know if it was or no. It's just that they look at the the type of games, the the scenario, the the time, of the season, how much it means. You know, the the opposition you're playing against. I don't know what his style is. I've I've no actually looked that far. That'll be it. interesting to see what his style is. <clears throat> whether it's but I would say he's worked at Liverpool under 18s. Yeah. I would imagine they're no so that going to be a defensive. Well, side. that's why I was surprised because he came for Liverpool. He came for Liverpool when he came to Black Blackpool. And we played against them no long after, so I was expecting yeah. that sort of four three three high press front foot stuff and it wasn't at all it was kind of maybe he's went in early and thought right start for the back yeah. make it solid hard to beat build get results that. and build on so that so Hearts fans will give him to half three <clears throat> Saturday is that what you're telling us that I, the way I, we work I, yeah. I don't I think any of them are even getting him to three o'clock make it to <laughs> half see what the team like there's a few that's, that are not happy as it is we've got an Edinburgh Derby special next week we do yeah we? looking um, forward to that so yes, make sure so you subscribe keep an eye out for yep. one of the new yep, season yep. and uh well, everything that goes around that, all the bragging yes, rights and so on. Looking forward to that. Um, Kilmarnock has been a tough place <clears> for <throat> Rangers over the last few seasons. Coming off the back of breaks has not always been brilliant for Rangers, but maybe we're generalising here. It's different teams, different yeah. players. What do you think of this one? I still think it'll be tough. I think Kilmarnock getting a good win just before the break. Um, they've, they've certainly felt the effects of... Uh, their early start in Europe. I, I'm not saying it's a European hangover, but they struggled initially to deal with the, you know, the, the demands. Um, and I think picking up a few injuries, they've played games where they've the players have been sent off, and you're asking again your players to dig in. Um, but I think that having getting the win, having the break, maybe allowing you know some players to come back, allowing to get some actual proper training um, in preparation for the game would mean that Kilmarnock will be in good shape going into the game. It's going to be a tough one for Rangers, but likewise, you know, Rangers, their form has picked up and they've had time to work as well. I know they've had a few internationals going away, but time to get players, you know, fitter um, and more ready to, to have an impact. So <clears throat> I expect that to be a very good game, actually. How um, tough will it be for Rangers? Obviously, this is a Sunday fixture and you've got Celtic and Aberdeen playing against each other the day before, but for the rest of the season, I suppose, if they're playing Europa League on a Thursday, they'll be playing more Sunday games with Celtic playing on Saturday, will that affect yeah, I, I think psychologically that has an impact because especially if Celtic won, it takes a wee bit away for you <clears> on the <throat> Sunday. And more, more more often than not, they will win on the Saturday. So it takes that wee bit of, So you almost need to win again to then bring it just back to, to what it up, was, yeah. just to keep just to keep uh, keep it close. So I think that'll be hard. I think that game will, will be really difficult for Rangers because Kamala <clears> on that pitch, you know, don't want to talk too much about the pitch, but the ball definitely moves slower on that pitch. I mean, you're a team that has most of the ball. You need the ball to move fast so they can't move as quick in their shape and you can maybe get through gaps. Um, so I think it'll be a hard game for Rangers. Yeah, tough time to play. But, as well, but, no, we're talking about guys coming back, feeling 10 feet tall after international football. John Souter, a bit of heartbreak at not <coughs> making the Euros. He's Scotland's man of the match. So Rangers fans will then be excited about what he can, you know, if he can bring that form and, and kick on. It is, I, but it's a completely different game. I mean, you go for playing it's against Ronaldo, chip. against players that don't, don't play the ball long and play a written shot and they're defending your box to Kyle Vassell. He's going to be against Kyle Vassell who um, I played with Fleetwood and he's a, he's a handful, he's a strong player, he, he's, he, he can shoot with both feet. He I mean, he is good. one of the best players in the world and now you're saying Kyle Vassell is better than him? Much better than him. <laughs> Twice the player. I'd much rather play against Ronaldo. <laughs> That's <laughs> our social media clip right but there. That's the thing because <laughs> Kyle was, uh, whilst I didn't want to... <clears throat> be rude to Kyle Bussell I just wonder if he's ever been in the same sentence as Cristiano you know Ronaldo before uh, he'll be one delighted for you, right? he has now yeah. <laughs> here's one for you you put this in your YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah go on then you right. can put this in your YouTube <laughs> so you laugh your dad on the YouTube on oh, no. YouTube <laughs> so see playing against players like Kyle Bussell sometimes it's so much harder than playing against international players because if the ball's coming up quick and it's coming up and you're up against somebody strong and uses their body really well, it can be a real difficult day. 
sometimes some when these players don't play long or play to direct big strikers, everything's in front of you and you can kind of read the it's game. Different. So I'm sure Goldson, sometimes Goldson, Goldson that's because he was a cultured defender. See, so that's I think yeah, I potentially. A few for the last few seasons, I remember watching like Rangers and Livy. Goldson would always struggle against like a Nublé, for example. Uh, yes, he's maybe example. not the best player in the world, but just someone who's as I said, a half in the, in the Champions League more recently. Let's oh, get okay. that yeah. model ready. And, 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 when you're playing half in the Champions League or an international level, you're a lot of reading the game. It's a lot yeah. of, whereas yeah. domestically, it's a lot of fighting against big strikers and it's long throw in. You don't need to look for the striker, do you? When you don't need like that you, because you know he's going to try and pin you. He oh. wants to fight you. You know that if it's the ball's bouncing, you're probably going to take a hit. And if he pins whereas you, if you're early. playing against a top one, you're going like I need to make sure I'm looking here, but I know he's there. And if that comes in and I'm not in the right position then I'm in trouble because it's top level. Yeah. It's Whereas no if you play Kyle Vassell and it keeps one bounces in early doors and he holds you off and he holds in and he lays it off, you just know he goes a wee bit like that and you're like, oh no, I need to win the next one. You might go over aggressive, you might spin, you might go, oh no, I need to get to, I need a grip of this here. Um, so sometimes it can be more difficult. Mm -hmm. Works yeah, in okay. mysterious ways. Uh, loads of big Strange games sport. in the Premiership this Kyle weekend Vassell, as well. Kyle best player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Ballon d'Or. <laughs> Kelly <laughs> rejected the chance of signing Ronaldo because he had... Aye, you get the sale. <laughs> Uh, Fadi mentions Motherwell in good form obviously yep. I'm glad he got that in uh, Paul McGinn though big Very injury well. for him so it's a ball let's take a look yep. at the championship fixtures as well James I know you're all across yep. uh, the division generally hard to look past Falkirk at the moment isn't it and the, the great things that that is. Is. Oh, in fact look at this we've got a, we've got Hamilton Aki's member of staff here okay. as well and yep. Charlie McGrew so fight between yourselves who's given us the inside track in that game on you go <laughs> I, I don't know if I, listen I, I like the way the manager John Rankin works at Ham. I like, I like his, his preparation for the game. It's really <coughs> detailed, and yeah, they're going to they're going to be up for the game. There's no doubt about it. Falkirk got a good side and a good passing team, and they, and they know that. So it'll be an interesting game. They're both doing well. You almost forget they both came up yep. last season as yeah. well in that game. It's amazing yeah. that they're both League One last season. The other teams that you would expect it to be coming up, um, yeah. and they've come up and. Both of them have done well, but Falkirk have been exceptional. I think that you could see that last season, Falkirk, the, I, I remember going to Falkirk Queen's Park in the Challenge Cup and Falkirk were outstanding. It was when, at the start of the season mm -hmm. <clears throat> when uh, the Queen's Park were going down the kind of Dutch route. Falkirk outplayed them um, and it was just so impressive. Um, you see the players that they have, they were ready to come up and step up and, and do well in the Championship and what a league it is. It's a, it's a brilliant league every single year, but we're going to get one of these teams winning it and it's going to well, be... Well, even at that, amazing. Air Livy's second yeah, against yeah. third as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Then you look at for different storylines like Partick Thistle and Airdrie, you know, both really could be doing with trying to climb up the table. Airdrie have had a really tough time of it, so... Both the five clubs are struggling as well, Dunfermline and Rafe. Both yeah, home lots to look forward to. Um, what about League One? Sam, this is usually when I lean on you and just try and figure out which far-flung ground we can send League you to. One. We can't get any worse than last week. You hear oh. about this guy last week. He came in here saying it was, was international buzzing. break. I was buzzing, yeah. He international was, break. He was going to see Campbelltown pupils. You ever been down there? Right. What, 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 no. what, league, what, you, what level is West that? West of Scotland League Division 4, so the 10th tier. How Scotland. long did it take you to get there? Four hours. And? It was locked up. Drive. Postponed. <laughs> So four hours to get back as Rained well. off. Eight Rained hour round trip. Oh God. I think it was raining. I think it was the wind. All, all, in, all in the name of YouTube. It's Scotland's Honestly. most remote. But I don't want to give away too much. I want to go oh, back sorry. there and make the video. But yeah, it's just far flung. <laughs> so I'm going to go and make a video there. But yeah, eight round, cooled off. Eight hour round trip. Oh, but at least Campbelltown oh. pupils are getting a shout out on the show. Exactly. Right? Good yeah. on them. On the pupils. Uh, right, at least put yourself in a hotel the next time and enjoy it. Yeah, but what did I have? Did I have something the next day? I don't think I did actually. Busy, busy as okay. ever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. We'll have to do a little road trip. Tight, though, isn't it? it is, yeah. It's hard to pick out one fixture just because there's six points between first and ninth. See, Kelty are doing well right now, but a couple of results in the league could just like flip yeah. on its head. I think Inverness, you look at obviously the story yeah. of the field. Every yeah. time they take the field, you think, is it the last yeah. time they're going to play a game? Which would be unbelievable to think you know one of your former team. teammates up there yeah big dunk, big dunk yep. yeah um, Stenny I think are doing well just now as well I think they're second right another now another one of my former teammates oh yeah Nate Smith yeah been impressed by him how he's done uh, yep yeah, I'm not surprised I'm not surprised he's done well before so mm -hmm. that's great to see in League 2 everyone's just looking at 4-4 <coughs> uh, East 5 did, did that scoreline ever actually happen is that one of these Scottish football myths I think it's a four, 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 I, think yeah, I don't think it ever five. quite happened is it no over the tongue twister 4-4 East 5-5 five, five. Five, five. Five, five. but is, is is it a myth? It's that never I don't think it's ever happened. To the bottom of it. You've, You've never heard of that? Because no. obviously it's quite hard to get your tongue out. There you go. Uh, comment in the 
comments below. <laughs> about you're getting there, you're getting there. We're only 12 Write weeks something in. in the We're 12 comments weeks below. I don't think it ever happened. tell us if that ever actually happened. We could be wrong. We need to know. You're the man to discover that. You can yeah, we'll, we'll dig it out. But that's, that is an interesting game anyway. He's five flying, obviously, Fine. with Dick Campbell at the top. Yeah. Four for, I think, a ninth. But again, there's only like one point separating the bottom four or five teams in that league right now. So you don't want to be in that last spot. It's precarious down there. Yeah. Clay got manager yet, no? Not yet. Do you want us to link you? Yeah. I think we've got the power in this show. You're, you're, you're right. Right. Oh, no, no, no. Definitely not. He's, Sorry, Clyde fans. I thought no that's why he brought it up. Yeah. No offence. No, no right. offence, Clyde fans, but you could have. <laughs> Clyde fans, would you take Charlie Mulgrew? <laughs> You've actually just brought attention to the fact. Uh, no. We should have done. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, Charlie I, just, I don't want you to link me. I'm not, nothing against Clyde. Just <laughs> Sounds like Charlie, Charlie Mulgrew, Mulgrew <laughs> rules just himself. Just up. It's the only thing I know. <laughs> so you're ruining yourself at a job you've not even been linked to. Rules himself uh, out so Can we uh, <laughs> cut that, please? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I think that's us. Thank nice. you very much to Charlie McGrew. James McFadden. Domestic football is back. We're all very much looking forward to it. Uh, so plenty to get our teeth into this weekend. Yes, please subscribe for the Edinburgh Derby episode <clears throat> next week. We want you to comment who you think is better than Ronaldo. Is it a Kilmarnock striker? Who knows? Let us know in the comments. But thanks for watching. See you next time.